Professor Singenson is an assistant professor of business economics and public policy at Wharton, specializing in applied microeconomics and industrial organization. He receives his PhD in business economics from Harvard University and Harvard Business School. Prior to academia, he worked in consulting and as a researcher at the University of Chicago. His research focuses on questions of market structure as they relate to the industries of media, technology, and telecommunications. Specific topics he has worked on in this area include contracting, product positioning, and platform competition. Professor Stinkinson made his title very simple, Exclusive Smartphones, Why Limiting Your Market Can Be Good For You, But Also For Your Competitors. Are you ready? Ready. You all know what this is. In fact, I can see a few of you checking yours right now. So back when this first launched in the US, it was available on only one carrier, AT&T. These two things were chained together. If you're Apple, why would you want to limit the potential market for the iPhone to just one carrier that had 30% of the market? Well, in my talk today, I want to try and explain this fact. So first, I want to explain why this contract could make sense for both AT&T and Apple. Second, I want to explain how this contract will affect the rest of the market, so competitors and market structure. And because I love a challenge, I want to try and relate this all back to the concepts that we teach in magic, because that stuff isn't just for the classroom. All right, so when you buy a smartphone, what's happening? You're actually buying a bundle of two goods, right? You're buying the handset, the smartphone itself, but you're also buying the wireless service that makes it work. What's interesting is that these two pieces are sold together, but there's no reason to think they have the same market power, right? I could have stronger preferences for the handset as opposed to the network. So if you're Apple and you're in this kind of a setting, you're thinking about going with AT&T, what does your choice look like? Well, if you go with just AT&T, you're probably going to sell fewer phones, right? However, the upside would be you could, in a sense, lend your market power to AT&T and make more profit per phone sold. So the question is then, when will these, this pro outweigh this con? So let's walk through a little analysis of what this looks like. Suppose first for a second that every carrier could sell every smartphone, OK? And this grid is going to tell us the profits you can earn from each of these bundles of a handset and a smartphone. So there are the profits, OK? Now, so, now since every carrier has every cell phone, these bundles are only differentiated by the network. But if demand for networks is very elastic, this becomes perfect competition, which as we taught you in magic means wah, wah, no profits. <laughs> Right? So the first takeaway is if every carrier offers every handset, they're only differentiated on the network. And if network demand is elastic, they'll compete away profits. Right? Apple would still be fine. They could sell a, a, the, the, the phones to each carrier at a markup. But now let's think about how an exclusive contract could change this market. So let's give the iPhone to just AT&T. Okay? So that bundle now has market power, and they can raise the price. But then the other guys can raise their prices a little bit too. There's less price pressure. And then Apple can raise it a little bit more. And we reach a whole new equilibrium of higher prices in this market, where there's much more profit in the channel. And Apple, being clever, can write a contract, a two-part contract, to extract a lot of that extra surplus that they've created in this market. So the second takeaway is what does the exclusive contract do? It reduces price competition between these bundles. Okay, It leaves more uh, profit in the channel. And so now, it, this may actually be more profitable for Apple and AT&T if the carriers are very good substitutes. All right, so I want to summarize this theory because we're, I'm going to take it to data. So the theory is if networks are very good substitutes, that means that uh, demand is very elastic and we have this perfect competition problem. And if handsets are very inelastic, that means we get this big jump in prices from an exclusive contract, then this might make sense. And they could, the two com uh, companies could split higher profits. So the, I want to do this to the data. So what did I do? I went to Nielsen and they gave me first consumer data. Basically, every handset that everyone has in every city every month and on what carrier? And I combine that with what they call their drive test data. They have these vans that drive around every city and constantly try and make calls on every network, and they measure the dropped call rate. And so I have a measure of the network quality of each of the carriers in every market. Now, the real cool trick is that, you know, say Verizon has the best network in New York, but you know, AT&T has the best in Chicago. What's weird is that they don't actually charge different prices in different cities. So I can look across cities, look at the response in demand to network quality, and estimate the elasticity of demand for the networks. And when I do that, the cool, I can then simulate what would have happened in other scenarios. So for example, I can tell you what AT&T's profits look like when AT&T has the iPhone versus when Verizon has the iPhone. As you can see, big difference, right? They lose a lot of money in that case. If I do the same analysis for Verizon, Verizon would only lose a little from not having the iPhone. The takeaway here is that AT&T faced very elastic demand compared to Verizon. They were willing to pay a ton for the iPhone because they, they were going to lose, lose a lot. But look at Android. They actually did really well because the iPhone was only on one carrier. If the iPhone had been on all four carriers, we'd have a sad Android. 
they would have made a lot less money. So the, the important takeaway here is that uh, this content actually created a hole in the market that gave Samsung and other competitors an incentive to invest in their own cool smartphones. So why did they renegotiate that in, in 2011? Well, if you're AT&T, there's better substitutes now for the iPhone, right? The Android started to get better, so demand for the iPhone became a little more elastic. You were willing to pay less for exclusivity. If you're Apple, it's a platform competition situation now. You need app developers to come to you first, so, you want, so it's very costly to be exclusive. So both these guys were happy to renegotiate. In summary, this is a story where the relative elasticity of the two parts of this bundle are different in such a way that an exclusive contract really changes the price equilibrium in this market. It had uh, both good and negative effects for consumers. Magic does indeed matter, and I look forward to talking to you all about this later on at Pub.